Well, hello and welcome to The Wrap. This is a show rounding up all things with from the last week. We are talking racing, events, tech, fashion. We are live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. It's also a podcast. You can download, search up The Wrap. And Zwift, you should be able to find it on any of the places that you can download a podcast. And it's over on ZwiftCommunityLive.com. This is episode number 42. It's Thursday, and it is May the 4th be with you. Actually, amazing day to be having the wrap on. Anna's showing off her amazing Star Wars t-shirt currently. I'm Nathan Garrett. Anna Russell is next to me. I'm coming out of Wisconsin of the USA, and she's over in the down under parts of New Zealand. And today on The Wrap, we've got some amazing topics, actually. It, this, as the got closer and closer to the show, it felt like the topics just kept on increasing and increasing. And it's kind of awesome when you have lots of content to talk about with Zwift stuff, especially heading into the Northern Hemisphere summer times. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to limit it and push some topics off to next week and maybe even the week after. But update 1.39, power-up change is going to be one of the main things we'll be talking about there. There's a new Rebel route uh, that Zwift Insider put together, Power Power. Women's Racing, we'll have a little bit of chatter about that as we have a lot lately because it's such a huge part of Zwift. But a question is whether or not it is a match made in heaven with some pickups that Anna has about the participation levels. Uh, Try NZ and Oz Cycling Competitive Series have gone underway, and I saw there's some amazing broadcast productions going on with that as well from somebody who might be on this podcast. And then do you do workouts in erg mode or don't you, and why or why not? Our guest today, James Bailey, content programming specialist over at Zwift, somebody who works at Zwift who came straight out of the community, was running the Herd Series, one of the best uh, as it comes to event organizers. Now the one of the content specialists at Zwift. We've had him on the program before. It's going to be great to have a chat with him. And of course, it's going to be fashion, the fashion show we have here. We have some great picks. Let us know what you think about those picks in chat. Uh, the base camp kip in the running league leaders jersey. Let us know in chat. We'd love to have and get ready for a debate for sure at the end of the show all about those. So, but as always, since we are uh, insane and ride Zwift, like maniacs we always talk about what <laughs> what have we been up to in relationship to Zwift over the last week so anna you want to kick it off i see something about a jet 100k kilometer yeah. rides or something yes okay so first happy star wars day it's one of my favorite days of the year i love it uh actually my son was born on may the first and i was his due date was may the fourth and we we're going to call him luke but he wasn't born on May the 4th. And so... Uh, so you changed the Luke. name? Oh my, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. You like based it on whether or not he was born on the day. Wow. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, it, it was going to be his middle name. So don't worry. It was his middle name. Uh, but my kids are currently running around the house saying, um, this is the way. So I think for nice. Halloween this year, I'm going to be, I'm going to be Bo-Katan. And they're going to be Mandalorians, and my little daughter is going to be Baby Yoda. So I think we're. Uh, I wonder we're all set. if generationally there's like kids that have run around doing different Star Wars sayings then at different times because this is the way is new. That's Mandalorian. Yeah. And yeah. right. And then we you have other Star Wars sayings from the originals. Then you have some from the later one through three episode. I mean, we could let, we're not having a Star Wars podcast. Okay, I'll stop right there because we could go off. Like we could totally go off. Oh anyway. yeah. But I think, but on that, they do know they can never do Jar Jar Binks. If they do Jar Jar Binks, they're out of the house. My kids uh, see, yeah. my kids are a little older than your kids. And there was definitely some Jar Jar Binks. Now, not because oh. I was like, yeah, go for it. They would just, you can't stop them if they're watching. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyways. Okay. Yes. Zwifting. So I have taken, Nathan has been the little sort of gremlin on my shoulder since the podcast. And I go into, every time I open the home screen on Zwift, I'm like, what would Nathan tell me to do? <laughs> oh um, probably God. not race. <laughs> so I was supposed to go for a gravel ride, but it was like a cyclone here and it just was too gnarly. So I was like, well, I want to, I've still got this time to myself. So I went on and was like, oh, there's this jet 100k ride and there's like 200 people signed up like this looks like a bit of fun and for the hot for all morning literally i swip, switched from like the slower category to the higher category the slower category to the higher category and then i was like i'm just gonna go the higher category i went in and 
I've got to say, like, I've been like mixing around with lots of different group rides. This is one of the most well organized and oiled really? machine rides I've really? been on. So picture this Japanese, right? Kilometers. Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because well, it's... have you ever seen how they build buildings yeah. over there? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. It was. So the majority were sort of Japanese, Australians, and some New Zealanders, I think, just because of the time. Um, okay, so it's 100K. The average was 3.3. So it was pretty hard. Like, it wasn't an easy ride. Like, we did 100K in two and a half hours. So it was pretty hard. So I was like, okay, this is all good. But then every segment, so there was Volcano, KOM, Watopia, and the sprints, you could do those. So they would say, yep, go for it. Go for your life. Go hit those sprints. And I was like, this is the first one. I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, we're going to break up within, you know, the first 5K as we hit Fuego Flat segment. Like, this is so in my head. This is so stupid. Like, why would they do this? We hit it. Literally, the people who hit it go back to 0.8 watts a kg until the beacon catches up again. I was like, whoa. Like, this is a group who has done this before like and the peer pressure around it was i was like oh well i'm okay i'll, I'll drop back really quickly as well top of volcano literal riders stopped foot on the ground waiting for like the yellow to catch up i was like this is awesome so like you had this great ride where it was you know reasonably hard it was like a zone two um but you could hit some intervals along the way 100k it's pretty long and everyone stayed together. Like at the end, it was a group. Like this was, I was just like, you leaders are phenomenal. Like you've created something here where people are like, Wacha, stay in line, you know? Sounds like a mountain bike. There, there must be some mountain bikers there because that's like, go chill, go chill. Cause it's like, go and then stop at a trailhead cause everyone's gonna get lost. <laughs> like, and we all wait <laughs> and wait for everybody. And then, okay, everybody go do your thing and then wait. Okay, everybody do your thing, but sounds really well organized. That's awesome. Um, yeah, actually, it was great. I didn't know and Jet was still running like like they were a top esports team, um, you know, for a while too. They were definitely amongst the crew, so it's cool to see that they're also running those rides on on uh, Zwift as well right now. Yeah, it was really good. And then um, I've just been doing some workouts. So I did a workout that I actually called. Uh, nathan's in my head or something no, like that are you kidding me <laughs> it was something like that it was like <laughs> i'm doing what nathan said um because i literally went on and was like oh what workout should i do i did an hour and a half i actually did a one of my own workouts that i give my athletes <laughs> surprise surprise and it was just an hour and a half of some low cadence resistance base work um nothing too crazy and nice. finished the hour and a half it was like ah oh, i don't feel smashed and then yeah I said you to look like you're feeling yesterday. fresh you look like you're like yeah. oh i feel kind of good right now <laughs> i feel good this is crazy like entering races i don't want to do and then destroying myself is maybe not the best um way to get better <laughs> i don't want to do this i don't want to do this i don't want to do what are you doing do, do what why are you doing what <laughs> 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 exactly what have you been up to nathan yeah so um i had a really great experience on saturday i did actually herd i did a herd race um it was the hill mountain goat uh herd race and and so hmm. i was dreading vo2 intervals okay like so you're somewhere between that three to six minute power efforts right oh and like i in the past would be like, well, it takes me about three and a half, four minutes or so to climb Watopia reverse. So I would just go and do repeats on Watopia reverse. Cause it's a carrot to chase. Right. And like, that's mm -hmm. kind of the minimum too. Like if you're doing a VO two effort, it's absolute minimum three minutes or a little over. So it's like, I was kind of doing the minimum. Uh, cause I hate these intervals. Like to be honest, I don't, I don't, they're the, they're the ones I don't like probably the most. And so, um, I saw that and it was on Surrey, Surrey Hills. I was like, this is so perfect. It's exactly the time length for those KOMs. And we did five of them. So it was exactly the VO2 amount oh. that I needed if I went. And so got into the race. There was some competition there. It was nice. There was Z power there too. And in that situation, when it's like intervals, I'm almost like kind of happy that they're there because they're going to push me to the max, like the like absolute <laughs> max. Uh, eventually he did like seven or something for like way too long. And I was like, I can't hang on to that. I'm letting this guy go. But, uh, it was, it was great. Um, and then I actually, I think I did some like work even after that. And then Sunday I did, 
oh, so I looked at Gabby after I was on race. She's like, what are we doing tomorrow? I was like, well, we need to do threshold work. And off the cuff, I was like, because we saw Kristen had done Ven Top. Kristen Kolchinski had done Ven 2. And I was like, you want to do Ven 2? So we oh. totally did a Ven 2 racer pace vision ride. But it was like just out of nowhere. We just like scheduled it. It was like, well, we'll just see if anybody wants to join us. And we actually had uh, somebody from Brazil who's become a friend suddenly uh, jumped in with us and did it with us. So that was great. Uh, I think a lot of people who saw on social was like, oh, I would have done this, but it's a little too late or whatever. But I was going for a sub 60 and a 5.0 and just, oh, I was I was literally four watts off of five watts per kilogram. Like four watts. That's oh. it. Like, oh, after. But anyways, it was it was a good ride. And then that's a. But I got to say workouts. that there probably weren't a lot of people who did Ventop because I would say it is the worst course on Zwift. Like it is the <laughs> it's worst what, climb. It's, it's a suffer climb because like you get into it and you're like. Like Alp has, you know, these round, like go corner to corner to corner. So you can kind of like have something come in, see something come in. This is just like time. It's just, you're looking at a clock almost. Mm. You're like, how much longer? How much longer? Like it's, you're, you just feel like you're there for, and I actually, during the, during the climb, when we got past the, the Rene, like at the, t there's like a banner that's like kind of like a yeah. three quarters of the way or something. I got past that and it got to those kind of where everything disappears and you're up in the clouds. And I was like, it was hurting so bad. I was like, is the air actually thinner? Like I started like, <laughs> that's like, oh my gosh, it feels like the air is thinner. No, you're just suffering. I Nathan. Think, and that banner, I've got to say psychologically. So you, the banner sucks because if you're doing the whole thing top, you get to the banner and you're sort of like, oh, like, should I just stop? Like there's, there's a point where it's making you decide whether you're doing this. And then if you do Loren, where you stop at the banner, you finish at the banner and there's always this guilt of like, should yeah, I yeah. keep going? I'm so yeah. close to the top. Well, they so probably create that just... tension in you on purpose. That's a good tension. Oh. <laughs> they're like, they're, it sucks. Well, I, hate well, I know it. it sucks, but it messes with you. See, this is the whole, like, <laughs> should I go smash my, that's when you want the, like, should I go smash myself or not thing? That's the, they're like, using yeah. it against oh. you. Right. Anyways. Yeah. I this think, is, um, yeah. And then I did SST Tuesday and yesterday. I mean, it's all race, race, race. Like, I'm getting into peak mode a little bit. And so I did, like, SST Insanity. Talk. We'll talk about that during more ERG stuff. And then I did went out for some Hammer Ride with Project Echelon yesterday, which was a lot of fun. So that's what I've been up to uh, this past Oh, week. very cool. Nice. Okay. Well, I've got to say, week one of Gremlin Nathan on my shoulder. And, yeah, like, wow, I actually feel kind of fresh. Like, I didn't get up at, like quarter to five in the morning and do a race that I was like not going to enjoy and I do want to know it I saw um congrats on Gabby too who won the the women's race this week but I saw your post on Facebook um which was really nice about you know how she was you know really nervous and anxious about it and I actually read that and was like I think this is why I wasn't enjoying those events is because that group of women in A were taking it really seriously and I would sit in the pen and it was just me and Cassandra like messaging back and forth. And I was like, oh, this isn't one of those like happy go lucky community races midweek where we just come on and chat and have a good time. You could like feel the tension. And I think that's why I just sit there. I was like, this is too much tension for me for like <laughs> what I want yeah, out of this. Yeah, that so crew is definitely not just show up for fun racing crew, right? Like you're looking at yeah. people who are watching their Zwift power rankings. You're looking at people who are looking out for what teams are developing right now in the esports space. I mean, you have world like people who are going yeah. for world championships. So yeah, that's going to be a tough one to jump into and be like, yeah, let's just have some fun. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So there we go. So that kind of made me feel better. Cause I was like, okay, that was the vibe I was getting. So yes, that was correct. That was a bit of a vibe. Yeah, there's definitely a vibe when Nathan's in the background on the Instagram post screaming, "Go to the line, you're gonna win it!" Like, I mean, like, there's, oh my god, yeah. So, oh, no. you haven't seen that? It's a great Instagram post. I've watched it probably fifty times actually, and it's our own, so <laughs> it's actually really good. All right, um, update. Let's go. Well, let's go right into ERG mm. mode, just because we j like real quickly here, okay. like because we were just talking about that and workouts. Is it best to do your workouts in ERG or not? And I'm going to qualify the best because I think that is somewhat relative. And uh, for uh, and you brought this up, so why don't you tell me your experience and like where 
you're coming from because it seems like you've gone to another place that you used to be one way and now you're like, eh, I'm going to go another way. And I, on the other hand, am the opposite, but like I've been one way and I'm going the other way, but we've all, we always end up on the opposite ends of things, it seems like. Okay. Oh, God. We will never agree. Never, never the two <laughs> shall meet. Uh, so I just put this in because I had a question. I run a coached group on a Thursday night and someone said, should I have Ergon or not? And I was, I, don't, I kind of thought about it for a while afterwards. I was like, oh, I wonder what the best answer to that is. And I think, so I, I haven't gone fully one way, but I, I love erg mode. So the reasons I love it is you get on, it's just set. You don't have to do a whole lot of thinking. You can alter your cadence and, you know, just do the efforts. It's not a huge sort of, there's a bit of a thought to, and changing gears and all of that when you don't have erg mode on that sometimes I don't feel like. But there are, because a lot of the workouts we're doing at the moment are base work, but at the end of the workout, we'll do some sprints, like five, 10 second sprints on two minutes or something. Um, and in those, I've always said, like, you've got to take erg mode off because these are about going to failure. So you need to have reached your power limit at like eight seconds, not be up out of the saddle and grinding a power that's set by erg mode. And I just have not found a way that erg mode can reflect sprints in a workout because it, it's just not the point of a sprint. It's just you going as hard as you can. So that was the part of like, I think during a workout, I'll always switch erg mode off for any sprint work. Like it just doesn't work. Um, but the other part of it was I had a chat about how I think sometimes you need to select workouts to turn erg mode off because especially in triathlon where you're riding like 90k at a pace so there's no surging really you're not like rate it's not like a road race you just lock in in a pace if you in my belief use erg mode like 100% of the time I think you could lose the feel of actually what it feels like to be riding that power because you're just forced into it and I saw um I think it was Duncan coming into the comments that he wouldn't have been able to do his SST workout without erg mode because that kind of forced them into the power and i think sometimes like you've got to reflect that because then if you go to a race and you can't hold that power like naturally you're not going to be able to hold that power so you could get a feeling that you can hold a higher power than you actually can based on the workout so i wouldn't say i'm like flipping i still use erg mode all the time but there are some sessions i'll do say if i i do three 20 minute you know, race pace efforts during a three hour ride, I would not have erg mode for those. I'd be racing those pure to get the feel for what that would feel like. Yeah. And I, so I think that this isn't like do one or the other, um, for most until this year, right. I've been racing bikes and using indoor trainers for a long time. I don't even know. What is it? 2023 racing bike 20 years. Okay. 20 years and indoor trainers, probably five years into that. So 15 years. And until this last year, I was anti erg anti like just hundred percent was with you. Like you need to learn the feel of what those wattages are. You need to know them based on RPE. You need to use every touch point of data that you can get to get the best informed scale of one to 10 or one to 20 or whatever you want to use inside of you so that you know how hard you're going so that without looking at a power meter, you can say, I'm doing 320 Watts. I'm doing 290 Watts. I'm doing, and to be able to know your body that well, based on perception is a really, really good thing for racing and really good thing for performance. I agree with that hundred percent. Um, and also control of your pedal stroke, like that there is a, um, feeling of your perception with the pedal stroke that's going to be extremely important and actually as well for racing and form and things like that. And so, um, you know, I think like people that when you can't hold wattage within 10 watts or so uh, on like, you know, a one second or a three second or something and it's all over the place, that's a sign that you don't actually have much control of your pedal stroke at all that your form is pretty far off and you should probably work on that. And that's where I think erg mode can, can um, be a crutch actually to, to, for that, mm -hmm. where you don't, you're not learning good pedaling form at all. You're just grinding against whatever that trainer is forcing you to do. On the other side of things, I've never seen gains before like I'm seeing right now. And from a purely like, do you want power gains point of view? 
erg mode has changed my life. <laughs> like, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what? Like, and so, um, and also with, 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 with marginal gains. So, um, I'm not saying this as in like, I need the exact number, like, and I need to see a perfect graph. I'm like, not all about that. I'm a little bit more about it now that I've been doing it for a while. It bugged me before actually, uh, that it'd be a perfect graph. Cause I'm like, that's not how the power actually looks. That's not even real. It's like giving you a misrepresentation <laughs> of what's actually happening while you're pedaling. It's fake. But now I kind of like it cause I've been using it for so long, but the marginal gains I'm getting now because of the incremental increases that erg mode is forcing me into, I would not have done before because I was way too focused on peak powers, actually. Like you were saying about sprinting, where there is a tendency for those who want to always press the limit, always chase that carrot, then to go a little bit too much. Well, if today is 330, I can really do 340. If today mm -hmm. is whatever, I can really try and shoot for this. Whereas with erg mode, I can just increase little bits. And when I start failing, the heart rate gets out of the limits I'm supposed to be in. I don't end up putting too much TSS on my body over long periods of time. And then boom, all of a sudden it's like, you can't complete the workout or you're not seeing a marginal gain because you didn't go to time to exhaustion for a certain time frame. So I think that there's places where you can use it to temper that carrot chasing that you need in a sprint situation. Like you were saying, like there is situations where it doesn't matter, produce your peak power, just yeah. freaking go. But I think that there's other places where marginal gains that, that it's really important. And SST for me, that's one that's like steady state. Like that is one where if you're wanting to see week in and week out, steady increases, ERG is like, I, it's my go-to for it now. Yeah. Anyways. So. I totally, yeah, I totally agree. A really good point has come in from Amy Mundaseb in the chat as well, which is ERG, you, you've really got to make sure your FTP is correct yeah. to be doing ERG. Gabby's so that's was where off people, it was bad. Yeah. Things got really bad. Go ahead. <laughs> so like I'm, I've had to reduce mine because I'm doing like, I'm not racing as much. I'm not at that sort of level um, that I was say four months ago. And I was kind of putting it in and every workout, I was like, this is just miserable. Um, and I don't actually think I'm getting any gains. So yeah, I making sure your FTP. I got sick because yeah. mine was too high. Yeah. My cork reads a little higher than my, um, than my Wahoo. And, and I was using the Wahoo for the erg and boom, like it was like, yeah. it's like a 10 and that 10 Watts, it mattered. It completely yeah. mattered. And then I ended up being way o over on my workouts. Exactly. And I think, so one thing I've said to my athletes is if you've got like a, um, cause you can't do an FTP test every week. Like it's ridiculous. Like it's a high stress. It's not the point. So when I've just said to them, you need to tweak sometimes. So say you've got three sets of something, a workout, that third set, depending on how you felt in the first two, if you're feeling like they were a bit too achievable, use the bias and increase it a little bit and find that point of going, oh, actually maybe my FTP is a little bit higher now. Um, and you can tweak it that way. So you don't, you don't need to be doing an FTP test all the time. You can kind of be in a workout and know yourself like, mm, I think this should be feeling a bit harder. I'm actually just going to raise this a little bit and see if I can hold that. Oh, okay. My FTP has probably gone up like five to eight watts. So we might just do that for workouts going forward. That's where incremental changes on the percentages yeah. is like so great actually that that exists. All right. We got to change it up. There's so you guys, we're going to take the chat. And we're going to write it down and we're going to put it into <laughs> notes for next week or the week after because there's so much good chat here. Shout out to Crazy Pants. Shout out to Sweet Cyclist. Shout out to Amy Mundeset, like Zwifty, Zwifter, all you guys. We see your chat, but uh, we have to keep moving here because a lot of topics. Uh, power up rebalancing. This yes. is a big one. So let's dive mm. right on in. Anna, what happened here? There have been like total reworking, it seems like, of all the power ups on Zwift, which is crazy. Like, it's been a while since we've seen something like this. Yeah, this is amazing. And I think just as a note, next week on the show, Eric Schlange is coming on and we're talking updates. We're talking coffee stop that's coming up soon. So, just FYI, we'll have a discussion now, but will be a big show discussion next week is like some updates. Uh, so, I got the question that came in pre show about can I say what my new favorite power up is based on the changes so if we go through them aero helmet no changes draft truck increased from 30 to 40 seconds and the draft will be stronger feather 15 to 30 seconds anvil yes reduced to 15 seconds and a better calculation 
burrito increased to 20 seconds and no longer is it that terrible one that we found out before worlds where it made everybody lose their draft including yourself uh ghost to 15 seconds uh steamroller nothing and no xps thank god because that was terrible um okay so going through that my i'll go best and worst so best i don't know if this will be controversial ghost you heard me ages ago say ghost power up is freaking useless unless they make it longer and so i'll stand by it they've made it longer maybe not as long as i want i would have preferred maybe 20 seconds but it's 15 seconds i think that's enough that you can actually use it in a meaningful way now to do some sort of attack off the front um without having to start you know you could start further back and slingshot and then not reappear two seconds in front of the you know like so i think it's going to work a bit better oh again worst one i don't know if it's controversial feather there was nothing in my opinion there was nothing wrong with the feather being 15 seconds 30 seconds like that's all i'm picturing that's a serious it's a, like all i'm picturing is and maybe this is ptsd is skur in the <laughs> summit the semi-finals and the in the zwift racing league all i'm picturing is freaking kristen kolchinski getting a 30 second feather and i'll literally be like race over Game's over. <laughs> like it's, it's over it's just so i think i mean we've talked about it before you think that's overpowered i man. think but then i could i'm coming from a female a category perspective where that is like holy shit man like we're light already this is gonna be some insane 30 seconds like wow it's Un, it's it's what's become an unbeatable power up in my opinion for our category but come into chat and tell me because it could be totally different for a c cat you could be like this is amazing it was so underpowered before so i don't want to speak on behalf of like all cats but for our category yep too too overpowered at the limit when you're at the limit and somebody is able to pop 30 seconds of a feather that in, in the how much you gain from the feather i would have to say it will definitely be strong enough that it'll be almost impossible to respond you know so there is that like yeah. it does get to the point where when it's impossible to respond then is it overpowered because i do think 30 seconds is it, it's a pretty long time now i did though i did feel like that the feather may have been just slightly underpowered before just slightly though so i'm wondering if this was just maybe an over compensation um that it wasn't doing quite as much. I could see like maybe reducing how much lighter it makes you, but keeping it at 30, I would feel better about that actually, where it's just a slight yeah. increase maybe, um, you know, that, that would be, or not increase, but a slight weight change. Um, I could see that, but um, I feel okay. I want to see it in action. The other thing is since I am a climber a little bit, like I do like climbing, like, I probably am like, yay, this is really <laughs> great. Like now I can really, really go. <laughs> like kind of a thing. Yeah. So I definitely feel a little biased of like, woo. Um, you know, so if my favorite though, let's go. So those are all the changes. I really like that they removed, man. How many times are you looking at that XP? Even during the women's racing series, <sighs> like, and you're getting an XP in events and you're just like, this is dumb. This is so dumb. Yeah. Like, why is this so yeah. bad? so yeah really so glad. good that's where like that so uh, do i have a favorite power up my favorite power up is that that power up is not in the game during <laughs> events anymore that's my favorite power up like there are no more xps in racing events by default like how long did it take us to get here I mean, like, like, and then I gotta ask, like, does anybody race in Swift? Like, do you know what that feels like? Do you know what that feels like? <laughs> oh man, I um, yeah, I do like that. Well, a thought just came to my head because we'll uh, coffee stop is coming next week. I think is uh, what I saw. May tenth, May tenth, May tenth, coffee stops coming, which I'm very excited about. One thing I was thinking. Um, imagine if you had a coffee stop actual power up so it only lasted for say like 10 seconds but if you got it you could just stop peddling and chill for a bit oh yeah gosh, and so you kept cool. up with the speed of the group that would be so cool like what an epic power you just up. get like, a just rest you just get like, rest oh, oh yeah, i'm really like, dying totally and like rest. you know you know that you're like 
in over your head a little bit at this moment or yeah. that you will be in the future. So you've got this like get out of jail free card for 10 seconds yeah. at a certain point in the race. That's actually a really cool idea. I think like that it's not an aggressive really power it. up. Just, it's not, yeah. it's not a, um, really a, a, a counter power up, but it's kind of a neutral, it's a little bit neutral, you know, like yeah. it's a reserve protection. It's like a protection power up. I like that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Anyway, I'm I'm really excited they've made some changes. Like for the most part, like ninety to ninety five percent of these, I'm just like, yep, this is cool. Like this is gonna make racing yeah, great. I love it. Um yeah, good job. Yeah, I think it's great. We'll talk more about power ups, opinions on on them and everything next week with Zwift Insiders Eric Schlangi is we're gonna have him on. And there's a whole lot uh, obviously happening real quick. I uh, mentioned the new pairing screen layout is pretty cool. There's some hints in there. We'll talk about that next week as well. I know that there's hints at steering, which is really interesting. Um, what do we got? What else do we got going on here? All right. What's going on with the try NZ and our cycling competitive series. Are you broadcasting? Oh these? yeah, I sure am. I've done that for the last few years, but just wanted to give them a shout out because I know that, it's mostly summer in most of the Zwifters world, but for us, it's now winter. So we're running, yeah, we've got our New Zealand and Aussie series uh, coming through. The first New Zealand one was this week. The second Australian one was this week as well. And there's some real hitters turning up. So lots of the reps from the eSport World Champs. Um, I designed the race series, so I made it a little bit different. So the, all the races are around 20 to 22 kilometers. And every sprint banner is first across line, but every climb banner is fastest time segment. So you kind of have oh, that's a different good idea. points. Yeah. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, because we talked about it a while ago that sometimes, you know, you drop from the group, but you could actually still go hard on a climb. And we saw that, like in one of the women's races, the leader wasn't getting the fastest times. We did the, um, oh, what's it called? The Muckle Yin. And so there's a ton of short climbs there. So she was out the front. She had broken away and was on her own, but she actually wasn't getting the segments because the others behind her were in a little group and we're getting this fastest time segment. So it kind of seems to be working pretty well. Uh, and we also had a New Zealand Olympic medalist triathlete come in and do the first race for the tri men's series, which was epic. He has a bronze medal in the triathlon at the Olympic games. And it was awesome because one, he had the Red Bull helmet in game, which looked oh, nice. really rad. Yeah, I've got to get a shot of that and have that as my garage pick because no one will have it about from him and Walt Van Aert, I guess. And uh, hey, Kim, Kate other Courtney, I've seen, I, there's a couple, like a few yeah. Red Bull athletes have it, like a few, just a few though. Yeah. Anyways, it's yeah. cool. So, but what was awesome was, I mean, he was up against James Barnes, uh, Ben Ruth, uh, Mark Bosted. So a lot of the like really big New Zealand esport riders. And because he doesn't race on Zwift, he's on Zwift, but he doesn't race on there. It was awesome because he was just doing random stuff that like the others were like, what is going on? Like, and he came second. He like broke away so early. And I think the others were like, oh, ha ha, we'll stay in the pack. And he just made it. And so I was like, that's kind of a good lesson is maybe just go race and do some crazy stuff because it kind of paid off. So it was, it was really fun to watch. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Last one, before we bring in our guest, just as a heads up rebel route coming in from Eric Schlange over at Swift insider as well, as well, the Fower power. I don't, what is a Fower? I don't even like, I thought it was a misspelling oh. in the, in the, <laughs> in the dock, in our, in the rap dock. I was like, is it flower power? But a Fower in scots what is, is like is that like a means four. or something or what oh four okay it means four i think so complete four loops and after four he's got fower so i think and gaelic no gaelic's not that it's a gaelic it means four fower james four. is gonna correct this go. i feel like i feel like he's gonna be like what what are you, like you don't know what you're talking <laughs> what are you yeah, talking i can't about? even i learned i searched fower and i still even google thinks it's flower <laughs> <laughs> but this was um this was a shout out to uh if you want to just go ride some new routes go to zwift insider because it looks like eric might be putting up some like of his rebel routes in the scottish map which is cool and we all know that a lot of those rebel routes turned into actual routes like downtown yep. titans was one eastern eight i think was another so um and they're they're some of the funnest races so um beach island loo or no um 
There's one that's a sprinter's uh, seaside sprint. Seaside sprint is as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So cool. So yeah, go hit them because um, no doubt probably they'll actually become routes later. Yep. Totally. All right. Well, that is the topics. Now, how about we bring in our guest, James Bailey? Great to have him back on the program. James is content programming specialist at Zwift and coming out of the community was running the herd. Uh, series and team for a quite a long time it was so awesome at putting together events. Swift was like, "Hey, you want to go be a specialist at programming content?" It seems like, and now he's, uh, from what I'm seeing in chat, known as one of the nicest people at Zwift because he takes care of all of our problems when it comes to events. <laughs> so he's also putting on the women's series. James, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? Yeah, good. Hey guys. Um, hey everyone. Um, Nathan, big congrats to Gabby on her fantastic win on Tuesday. <laughs> that's a thanks slide. well and why would you take notice of that because you're putting on that women's series as well as a few other things for when it comes to zwift and racing yeah i, I look after um the the women's series um the uh, zwift tt series and i generally do a lot of the um so in my, my team there's three of us there's ryan Lear, and myself and i tend to look after the competitive side so monthly racing um crit club start this week um as well as the women's series and the TT series as well. Gotcha. And I think, um, James, when I messaged to see if you could come on the show again, I sort of gave you open slather to have a topic of whatever you wanted to talk about. And I was quite surprised by the result, actually, that I was like, oh, okay, you've yes, that's what we're going to talk about, is a real behind the avatar of who is James Bailey. So you've got quite an interesting story. So we're not here to talk Zwift events. Uh, we're actually here to talk James. So can you give us a little bit of this origin story of yourself and how you came to be where you are? Yeah, so um, and I think today is the way to introduce um, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away um, <laughs> or London, 1980. Um, I was born <laughs> with uh, fundal albin sorry, fundal albinism, uh, which gives me my uh, basically a type of albino that doesn't have white hair and pink eyes um i have myopia astigmatism strabismus nystagmus optic nerve hyperplasia and photophobia uh, which basically means that i can focus on big things from about six feet away um but in terms of reading things uh, i have to get really close um like on my desk here i've got a 27 and 32 inch monitor uh, just to really be able to do like an office job, essentially. Um, I was also born with uh, fairly severe negative pressure inside my middle and inner ear, which gives me anything between sort of 40 and 70 decibel hearing loss. So for those of you that cycle, you'll probably know that seeing things helps and being able to balance also helps. So I, I rode a bike a little bit as a kid, um, but really just sort of like up and down the roads, um, nothing, definitely nothing racy um and then sort of 20s 30s didn't really ride at all um started getting pretty fat um turn, turned 30 and could no longer eat and drink whatever i wanted to um so i got to about 100 kilos around age 35 36 and my wife bought me a bike and in return i bought her a bike um and we lived right next to the canal so we'd go on like not too long and pretty slow bike rides um, between um, uh, Leeds and Bingley. Um, so basically there and back would be about 50 kilometers and probably like a three, four hour trip. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, bought myself an exercise bike and I'm sure loads of listeners are very familiar with pedaling while staring at walls. Um, and then one day I saw a Zwift advert on Facebook. So I have very, very little cycling knowledge. Um, I'm definitely not going to do any any mechanic sort of work in my life. Um, so I reached out to my cousin, who is basically my go-to for anything cycling related, and he told me what I needed. So I bought myself a Tax Vortex wheel on trainer, and that was it. Absolutely loved it. My, my first ride, um, I had to give up after 10 minutes because I was cooked. Um, averaged about one watt per kilo um and then i joined um the herd uh, who were 
at that time under a different name. Long story. Um, but yeah, you, I'm just getting up really quickly. I want to know did that 10 minutes you didn't join an event or anything like did you just like do a road on zwift like or like like i, I, was, I was just um riding on zwift um, okay and, and and obviously i did the california then italy challenge before realizing there's an everest one like everyone does <laughs> um but yeah no so um i saw that there were group rides um and i had a look on facebook for groups that did um like rides on swift and i came across the herd and they were just such an incredibly warm welcoming welcoming community especially at the lower end of pace um and i just loved riding with them they're like big on discord so there's loads of chat during the rides and it just made everything go faster it didn't feel as painful um and just a load of fun and then i discovered racing with my eyesight and hearing again can't see can't balance can't stand on a bike um it's something i, I would never ever ever possibly have had the experience in outdoor cycling um i'd probably spend more time on my ass than anything else but the the opportunity to actually go and ride really hard as fast as you can and the euphoria you get at the end of a race you know, even if you haven't done that well it's like oh my legs have stopped hurting i can celebrate that i got from a to b in however long and met some nice people formed like rivalries and just gen gen generally had a great time and that led me to actually we, we started off doing the uh, but like a bunch of three or four of us that would do the mini crit by wkg i think every wednesday so it's like a 15 kilometer race uh the d's would set off first c's would try and chase them down and a group of us um in the herd really enjoyed doing those and we started looking for other things to do and but as all like accidentally started forming teams so the herd admin team just said, well, we haven't got anyone looking after racing. Do you want it? I was like, well, yeah. Um, so started coming up with ideas for the races, um, mainly involving points um, and mainly FTS rather than FAL, um, and started to form a, a growing community that grew to about um, probably 10,000 on Facebook. So like, got really, really big. Um, and then I had an email from Swift asking if I wanted to come and chat about um, content programming, which just it sent. I mean, from my side of content programming, it's predominantly um, event creation and updates for various different community leaders. So that's forty-two and a half years in about five minutes. <laughs> Can you help me understand uh, just a little bit about your challenges with the disability? And it's it is like. Um, a light issue it sounds like everything's like part of it is a lot related to light it sounded like and how it's perceived um, or no so um my optic nerve hyperplasia basically means that my eyes adjust more slowly to changes in dark and uh, sorry okay. changes in light so yeah, gotcha. okay. when it starts to get dark i'll be more affected than other people who would have much better night vision than i do so i i, I essentially have no night vision my in, in terms of like riding a bike my main issues are the fact I don't see three dimensionally, so I've got no depth perception. I can't see bumps. Do you like view three? I just can't... Is view three or view? <laughs> one? I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um... oh, no answer. <laughs> no answer. Uh, no, no I, view I, three I don't, versus I, view I don't one. Understand the question. Oh, gotcha. Just because view three is all about depth perception, so I was like, well, oh, right, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah no, <laughs> yeah, so. Because I don't see three dimensionally, I, I don't see like changes in gradient very easily. I don't oh, see bumps okay. on the road, and with the short sightedness, especially, um, I can't see what's coming up. And if you like couple that in with balance, trying to go around a narrow corner that happens yeah. to be on the ed edge of a river, um, <laughs> it's just a bit nerve wracking. Um, I, I, I do occasionally ride outdoors. Um, I went to Wales last year with a group of friends thinking, oh, yeah, I can definitely do this. Found the first 20% hill. Definitely can't do this. Um, <laughs> and there, there are lots of 20% hills in Wales. I speak from experience. So um, 
that was kind of like a bit of an eye opener that no matter how much I convince myself, I can try and do these things. Often I can't. So I can do 20% hills and Swift, more than happy to, but definitely not outside. That's so cool to me that you found like you found cycling through this. It like well at least not found site, but found an area of cycling you would have never even come close to experiencing actually, and fully yeah. experiencing it like others do. I mean, everything you said about what you were experiencing sounds just like someone's introduction to cycling that's not in a virtual world, but you couldn't experience it that way. And now you were able to experience it this way with a community and huge enjoyment. Let's talk about like I mean, can you value add to life that wouldn't have been there otherwise? I mean, it like it just it sounds amazing. I mean, like just just from the health point of view, I dropped thirty five kilos. Um, so I went from <laughs> wow. being that's quite chunky to like borderline thin, which I could never even have comprehended ten years ago. Um, but like I've. I've always been someone that enjoys organizing things and the opportunity first in herd and then further down the line at Zwift to be able to organize things for people that give some great joy gives me even more joy. So when we look at like the women's racing series, people saying, oh, I had a great ride. That means everything to me. And I, I was joking before the show that there was, I, I was a little bit surprised there wasn't that much um, hate mail after um, Sprint City, but <laughs> just, just, just the enjoyment that people get from it just absolutely makes my day. That's awesome, James. It's, uh, I mean, I can say from firsthand, you are like unbelievably helpful. And so I think what you're doing is bringing this passion and you're it's so good to hear your journey into just being a, a general awesome person on Zwift now who can help people out to make good events that then can help people follow a similar journey, you know, to what you've had. I mean, what kind of advice would you would you give to those out there who, you know, can see some of these struggles as just a barrier to doing anything, you know? Like how what would you say to them to get over that and just the joy that you've now found being in this community? Um, I think just try. Um, you know, you, you don't have to be like, a professional on your first bike ride. Um, get on the bike, get on Zwift, give it a go, see if you enjoy it. I'm sure you will, obviously. Um, <laughs> and and just just try various different things. Um, so like my probably first good three months on Zwift, I would just ride flat roads. Um, I, I was 100 kilos. I didn't want to go anywhere near a hill. Um, I think the first time I went up Box Hill, I got off twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> and my, my, my first out took me two hours and 45 minutes. Um, I, I, I think you, it's, it's easy to find the experiences in Zwift that you enjoy. Some people might really, really love doing group workouts. Um, others, it's group rides. Free riding up a hill, um, free riding on flat roads, um, or the um, getting into racing environment as well. Um, so, in, in terms of what would I say to someone who may have challenges, may not have challenges, um, just try it, see how you find it, and if we can help, we absolutely will. I have a question about how quickly did you get involved in community? Like you said, herd was pretty quick, but I didn't. What like what kind of time? Like. How much solo riding did you do and do you do or was the community a very integral part to your journey toward losing that 35 kilogram you know what i mean like what how much did that actually impact the journey and, and, and motivate you or keep you coming back um i found community really early um so probably within about a month um yeah, I'd, I'd say I probably joined the herd within about the first month of my Zwift experience, um, and that really paved the way towards everything else. Yeah, this is, um, I mean, it's quite a common thread when we've had community guests on is that the community part is what has had the huge benefit for them and has kept them on the journey, you know? So it's really cool to yeah. hear just that backstory. I can see people coming into chat saying, wow, like very inspirational. Amy, I know, is a, um, I think a nurse who said, yeah, very impressed with your health journey, particularly, and um, just using Zwift to become more healthy. And 
I mean, do you still, there was, um, I think it was, I can't, oh, maybe Crazy Pants or one of the people in chat said uh, they thought I they saw you out pants. on, yeah, thought they saw you out on Zwift and were having a full conversation, but it was a different James Bailey. Um, do you? <laughs> Funny story. Do you st- um, oh, yeah, you shield. Uh, prob- well, there are several James Baileys. However, I have raced against James Bailey, who used to race for WTRL. He's a guy based in London. Um, we used to time trial against each other all the time. Um, he beat me up more often than I beat him, but um, it was still really fun. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> no, good. So do you still Zwift? I mean, you're, I know you're very busy with your job, but are you still on there? And what do you like doing on there now? Yeah, I'm still there. Um, I went on a really nice holiday about uh, two week, uh, two months ago and enjoyed myself a little bit too much and came back with a few more pounds. So at the moment, I'm trying to ride about um, an hour and a half, two hours a day. Um, I'll my, my normal day is start around about around about eight o'clock, um, work up until lunch, then do Zwift early afternoon, and then probably finish work about six o'clock after. Um, meetings which are because Swift is um, international with a fairly large base in the um, on the Pacific coast a lot of a lot of my meetings start at four o'clock my time which is eight o'clock theirs in the morning so I'll generally start early ride on Swift and then finish a little bit later so um, yep I'm still on Swift a lot Um, trying to do about 300 kilometers a week at the moment I do a lot of rides with pace partners. Um, Coco is my favorite, obviously. Um, and I do What's still your race. Feeling um, from your own personal opinion and like, you know, like, you know, we're a little bit of, we're getting away from, you know, content management on Zwift, but you know, you're experienced on Zwift, obviously, and, and, and uh, a lot of inside uh, knowledge. And what's your take right now? I mean, riding with Coco and riding with, for me, um, the pace partners have changed dramatically since PD4, and I just want to know what your take is cause, since you're like, well, I like riding with these ones specifically. Like, I hang out with Constance a lot. I really like with PD4 the riding Constance, uh, riding <laughs> with Constance 4.0. Mm. And so, <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks yeah. a lot. Constant, yeah, Constance. Nice so, anyways, <laughs> James, what do you, what's your take? Nice one. Yeah, thanks, um, Anna. So, I've, I've obviously um, I look after the pace partner schedules. Um, and oh, really? I've seen... Oh, I know, I know oh, exactly yeah. who to contact now. Good one. Now you <laughs> let the cat out the bag. Um, <laughs> funny story. Um, I the second time I met Eric Min, um, we were just at a bar after work. Um, various people chatting with him. He just turned around to me and went, "James, when are they going to go up Epicom?" Um, so Eric, Eric was very disappointed there aren't any big climbs in terms of pace partners. But um, go back to PD4, honestly, I haven't noticed that much. Um, there's definitely a difference in the churn in the pack um, and perhaps how wide the packs generally are. Um, in the, They're now a bit thinner, um, thinner but longer. Um, I still hold the same sort of power with the same pace partners. Um, Maria is generally my go-to. Um, she's good for warm-ups and longer rides as well. And Coco, I'm feeling like I'll go a little bit harder. But generally, my experience with pace partners, PD4, PD3, it's been very, very similar. <laughs> Don't even, That's Anna. Awesome. Don't <laughs> even, Anna. I'm not, I'm not, Anna's, I'm not saying Anna's anything. Face. Oh, my gosh, chat. I'm not saying anything. Sweet cyclist. Thanks a lot, everybody. Really appreciate that one. What a, I, um, I want to keep going on it, actually. Be like, whatever. We, we're we always riding with Constance. Me and Gabby ride with Constance. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. <laughs> I love those kind of um, flexible arrangements. Anyways. Oh um, so, <laughs> James, um, <laughs> this is going downhill. You should not have started Pace Partner Talk. Um, so, James, <laughs> since uh, we've had you on the show, we've had, the, you know, the – your journey but I, I can't not have the you know programming specialist on here and not ask events on Zwift you know any hints as to um, some exciting things we might have coming up in the future or um, changes that you've seen I mean obviously you see a whole raft of community events coming through to you 
what have been some innovations that people have put in place that you're like, yeah, that's actually a really cool way to do a race? Is it is it still an innovative space or is it sort of hit a bit of a, a level now? Um, no, I, I think there is still innovation. Um, I'm probably going to get the team wrong because I can't remember specifically, but I think it was Team Electric Spirit that brought out the either the ladders or the 5x5s. Five five, uh, five um, they, they've been definitely something new. Um, we're obviously seeing some results-based um, work with Dirt Racing Series. Um, and um, I started doing Dirt Racing Series before I got on the scales and realized, well, time to update. Um, they had a, a team time race, a bit like a team time trial, um, but the whole field was starting together and it was a time of your th fourth rider over the line. So you had the option of either going hell for leather, working as a team, um, but if you dropped your fourth rider, it's beneficial for everyone to slow down and pick them up and try and get them over the line as quickly as possible. I, I think that was confusing as hell when I first looked at it, but then I realized, actually, that's a really good idea. Um, I, I, I think if you go back to when I started organizing events around about, I guess, four years ago now, um, I think the big thing then was uh, custom points in Swift Power. And I think a lot was done then. Then ZRL started. All of a sudden, everyone wanted to do points races um, mm -hmm. just because of how much they'd enjoyed ZRL. And I think we've moved on from that slightly with organizers now thinking more outside the box on what can they achieve with what's available. Right on. Oh. Uh, quick shout out then to uh, what you're up to. Um, you know, women's series is going on. You said the TT series is going on. You mentioned a couple of others. Uh, just shout outs to the stuff that's happening on Zwift that you're a part of. I mean, you did it. I I'm really focused in because in house the the, the women's series being raced, and I'm not racing at that time, so I'm just like cheering Gabby on and then like hanging out and setting things up or whatever. But uh, what else is happening that you're up to that you're really excited about then before we uh, take off here? So. In, in terms of what I do, obviously monthly racing is a different different theme every month, so that'll be ongoing. Um, I look after the Time Trial Club and the uh, Women's Racing Series, which will definitely be coming back for a second series. Um, hoping to do a Hill Climb Club later in the year. Um, and that, that's pretty much my summer, really, to be honest. Um, the, the Women's Series... And I need to get some feedback from listeners. Anyone that's listened to the audio intro, can someone tell me if it's okay or if it's awful? Um, that, that, that's generally quite a bit of work on a Monday when I'm frantically thinking, oh no, I haven't done it yet. I need to record my own voice, which generally means that I'm going to try and re-record it about 15 times without stuttering, generally fail every single time, um, and try and sound like a relatively normal human being. Um, so if anyone's got any feedback on that, I'd be very grateful. But um, I've, I've absolutely loved doing the women's series. It's just been brilliant. Nice. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, James. Really, really appreciate all your hard work. You know, before we uh, brought you in camera here, the comments just came through and just want to say, like, the community loves you. Like, they are nonstop, nicest, most helpful person on Zwift. Some, a lot of the top uh, team organizers are in chat just praising how much work that you put out there. So, uh, from all of us at Zwift Community Live and the whole community, big thank you and love to hear your story. Obviously, Zwift has done and being a part of the community has done a lot for you and that you're just paying it back. So it's so cool to see and hear. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, of course, James. All right, take care. We'll talk again soon. See you soon. Uh, James Bailey, everybody. Uh, awesome to have him on. Always a great. Uh, that uh, really, I didn't know. I had no idea that that's what we were talking <laughs> Like, honestly, I didn't know about the disabilities. And I was like, whoa, all right. We've got an inspirational, amazing story here. And I didn't want to hammer on it too much, but I really wanted to learn a lot more about, like, what his experience is and, like, what that's like with these disabilities. And and then how cool it was to see uh, technology come alongside him and create an awesome community of cycling for him. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot to do with James and I kind of was like, oh, I'd love to have you back on the show. And I was thinking, you know, talk about event details and things like that. But he's like, oh, actually, could I share my story? And I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that was a great story to have. I mean, chat lit up uh, on James's side and also just uh, 
basically um, <laughs> giving you a whole lot of shit, Nathan. So that was very entertaining as well. Um, I don't know so if I've had that bad there. of a slip in a really long time. I don't know if I've had, I don't uh, know, ever. I don't know if I've ever had that bad of a slip. Or at least, you know, when you have a slip and then you catch it, it actually makes it worse. That is what happened. Because yes. I've had ones during, like, broadcast where it's, like, race mode. And you're like, da, 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 da. it doesn't even matter because it's just, like, throw it and, like, nobody goes there. But, like, I was like, what did I just say? Oh, okay. And then everybody sees or hears you think, what did I just say? And then everybody's like, what did he just say? <laughs> And it's then they go, fault. oh, we just did that. Great. Let's completely just keep jump this on going. it. So, you know, jump on it. Jump on it like that. I <laughs> love it. Um, <laughs> that was awesome. That was very good. And love having you. All right, James fashion. On as well. Let's talk fashion. Here we go. All right. We're right on into it. This week's Fashion in the Field the Base Camp Kit and the Running League Leaders Jersey. Let's have some talk about this. Did you do a ratings? One to ten? What are you giving this uh, for the join the base? What is that all about? You're highlighting join the base. Yeah, really so actually. Uh, I've never seen this, this kit. Just, no, yeah, neither. Jen Real sent it to me. Um, she obviously did a ride, like a group ride somewhere. I was like, have you seen this kit? I was like, damn, that is nice. Um, so then I went and looked at what they're all about. And they do, um, it looks like more of a sort of IRL group. So it's a cycling training community for everyone um looks like it's really really community based um so some community coaching i i mean go check out their website just google base camp cycling and you'll come to it pretty quick but um i mean one of their pictures is a lady who looks like probably over the age of 70 on a indoor training bike going pretty hardcore like up out of the saddle sprinting um so it just looks really awesome. So you, it looks like you can go train in amazing places. They have like camps and things like that. Um, but yeah, the thing that struck me was this kit is uh, pretty rad. Like just the fade blue, like aqua down to pink, the different colored shorts. I would give this kit like a solid eight. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I'll give it an eight. I'll give it an eight as well. That's a, I really like the fade uh, from one color to another. And it's not it's just the perfect um mixture i think of of lettering on there as well and branding on there as well without overpowering it and it's got some symbols on there too that are like behind the colors that uh, are faded in a little bit but they're not like exploding at you so uh, yeah they've done a really good job on that that like right away i was like whoa that is a yeah. sweet looking kit so nice job yeah. to them on that and, oh i kind of like that we do this with the fashion side of things where we also get to know who a little bit more about these communities. I mean, if you get a kit in game, you're a community on Zwift in some sort of way. And it's cool to see um, they have that virtual to in real life connection then with uh, these um, training rides and groups and camps, it looks like. So that's pretty cool. I always love to see that. All right. On your side of things, not my side of things at all. <laughs> Although, you know, there's a treadmill now somehow in this room. So somehow, like, yeah. So Gabby's Gabby needs like, to explain what she's doing. Like I'm seeing her doing these things called like. She work. owes you an explanation. She owes you an explanation. Yeah, she owes me an explanation on what that is. But yeah, the the garage pick I'll is the running is the running league leaders jersey. So there was a couple of reasons I wanted to throw that out. One was like a real humble brag, but I guess not so humble that um, our team was leading the running league. That's uh, Amy Munderserv and Joey Lithgow from Fearless. But we actually got a t-shirt. So you got a leader's t-shirt. And um, it kind of made me think like, man, we need to utilize that more. Like we need to utilize some leader's stuff in some races, like especially like you look ahead to ZRL. Like if you're leading the points, like if there's an individual component, man, it'd be sweet oh, to just yeah. chuck a leader's jersey on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just, but I think it needs it to be automated. To, it needs to be coded. It needs yeah, to be coded so yeah. that like, in game there's points and then like because otherwise the organizers have a bunch of work to do then or something i mean that yeah. would be not that bad if they could click a box then you know yeah but yeah but it all comes down to hashtag garage sale because this leader's running jersey is now forever in my garage which if you've got a true leader's jersey it should be automatically taken away as soon as you're not the leaders anymore or yeah. once that series has finished and i think that's the issue is like you get a leader's jersey um you need to 
take that take that off <laughs> like next time if you're not the leader so there needs to be the option to be able to remove things from a garage for this one to work but i really liked how we had that like you could wear a leader's jersey um yay over at uh twitch says if the shorts are blacked out it'd be a solid eight i'd agree black shorts mm. instead of all green i think it'd look better with some black sh like with some a little what little, the, my running just, outfit yeah the running outfit i think it oh, needs okay. black yeah. black in there maybe i mean just a little <laughs> far on the green there you went a little far in the green there okay <laughs> i was trying to match the team team fearless is green there we go i'll okay. change to some black shorts gotcha gotcha <laughs> all right so on the treadmill like gabriella like she can't sit still like it's been a thing like we work on sitting still <laughs> so like, like okay we gotta rest we have to rest we have to rest and it's and you know we actually sit down and watch a show or whatever like do something other than move but um she like and it's not just like there's a problem or anything like it's like um she needs to move blood in her legs a lot like in order for them not to just like turn to rocks and so um she likes to walk while she works and so she just t puts a pot on ah. and then walks while she's at her laptop so we actually built a desk over here uh in the wall well not a desk but like shelves where she puts her laptop and has the um like a walking treadmill it's not like a full-blown treadmill it's just like a little thing that goes up to i don't know like 10 kilometers per hour or something or maybe a little more maybe 12 uh, yeah, no yeah. 12 or 15 i think actually so i want something that the kids could actually maybe do a little jog on if they wanted to and i actually caught her yeah, cool. running like i'm riding and all of a sudden oh. i see her running i'm like why are you actually running like i'm just <laughs> yeah because i saw like, um... i have to do it and then she's like i have to complete the thing in zwift i have to oh, do the no. mission and all of a sudden the mission started and like there's like a character oh, no. chase and she wants to open up the kit and this whole thing i was like oh hon. hold on like <laughs> anyways okay there we go that explains it yeah the running the running missions can be risky because cycling if you want to like hit i don't know some kilometers or whatever you can just spin it out you can just sit there and put it in your low gear and spin it out running i mean unless you walk it out but that's going to take ages man like don't get trapped in that that's like an injury waiting to happen totally, like running yeah, is not yeah. good not good to add on those extra k's thank you for saying thank you yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. okay there we go yeah he's listening i'm sure okay well, that's going to be it for our episode number 42. If you were looking for more talk about power-ups, the update for 1.39, we will go deep dive into that next week with Eric Schlange. At the end of the program, we always talk about what are we doing for the next week, at least what our plans are. Uh, Anna, why don't you go first? I'm actually racing, like in real life racing this weekend. I'm doing the last triathlon of the season. Um, looks like it's going to be pretty wild. Like the swim is going to be through some waves, but I, I do like that. Uh, I've decided not to use my TT bike. It's a really short, like hot laps kind of a course. And it looks like there'll be a bit of crosswind and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. So using the roadie, um, get out there and a 5K run off that. Um, yeah. And then that's kind of like the end of the the official like triathlon racing season. So there we go. And then after that, it's into some long gravel riding. I think I'm going to hit a hundred K next week on one of the gravel routes near here. So yeah, that's, that's kind of me. I'm resting until not resting completely, but I'm just going to do some skills work until the weekend. First big Midwest mountain bike wars, Wisconsin off-road series. It's owned by Trek um tends to be the largest and one of the most competitive state series in the nation so it's gonna be a pretty uh hot battle so we'll see how that goes um but definitely taking it fairly easy until then i'm actually keeping up with uh la Vuelta femenina actually as well oh so my gosh really cool to you know i'm kind of excited last night okay i won't i won't i'm pretty excited i'm uh, to see you know, Digert's back in the mix. Voss is killing oh. it. I mean, it, the, the things are heating up, that's for sure. So it's been really exciting to uh, – and, and, you know, it just really is so cool to see the coverage and to see, like, on the radar and, like, oh, there's women's racing to keep watching. Like, the classics might be over, but bam, bam, bam. It seems like it just keeps on coming uh, at us as far as great coverage of women's racing. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to watch that through the weekend. 
Oh my gosh, I am so pumped for that as well. Like, I'm glad you mentioned that. It is. It has been epic. Like, I love Mariana Voss, but it's it's been cool to see Chloe Diget come back. I mean, for all of you in America, like, this is your girl. Like, she's out there. This is like one of her first races back, and she's. she's I was impressed it with well. how quickly yeah. she built, like because yeah. I was wondering. Cause she posts a lot about the healing and the, and the, the process that it's been to get to where, you know, back into competition. And I was like, is it going to be a, like a, a, a is she going to really pop on the scene or is it going to be a slow build back? Is she going to be able to, and then all of a sudden she's like there, I was like, Whoa, yeah. I, I was not expecting her to, to be at that top level that quickly. Obviously a lot of talent. Yeah, I think, I mean, I remember watching her at the Yorkshire World Champs just being like, wow, she like, she's a racer. And um, it's been good seeing her. I mean, I'm a huge Mariana Voss fan. So it's been like unbelievable to see her beating some of the best sprinters in the world. And a heads up as well, um, coming up on the show, it'll probably be after the Giro. We've actually got um, Benji Nyson. Um, so if you don't know him, he's on the Lantern Rouge podcast. He talks a lot of in real life cycling. But the reason I wanted him on, go check out his YouTube channel because he decided to keep racing on Zwift until he could win a race. Um, and his journey is unreal. Like he's he's not a elite A level racer. Like he came on at the you know coming last in these races, and he worked his way up. And the honesty on his face and the hard work of doing that i mean it was a, a pretty inspiring watch so go check that out because we're having him on as a guest yeah benji's uh over on youtube definitely go check that out he it's been pretty cool to watch i've been i've been picking up on that as well Anna, and i'm really excited we're gonna be bringing him on so all right everybody thanks for tuning in if you want to catch this as a podcast you're just tuning in later you just like to get the audio version of this you can find all of these all of the past uh, episodes over at ZwiftCommunityLive.com or search The Rap and Zwift. You should be able to find those. We've been live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, comment, do all that cool stuff. It helps a ton with the algorithm from Anna and I. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you next week for episode number 43. And as always, right on.